good morning. Good to see you in Sunday school this morning. Let's all stand, take our hymnals, and turn to number 375. Number 375. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which wrong I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy for my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into Seeds from my wandering and going astray since Jesus came into my heart, and my sins, which were many, are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. You've heard a lot of bad news all week. If you listen to the news about inflation and the price of gasoline, and a lot of bad news. But I got here this morning and the, and the choir sang, even in the valley, God is good. And the congregational number is, it is well with my soul. And then you often hear Dr. Barber quote uh, Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, the Lord of my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So this is a great counterbalance to what you're hearing outside of these walls. And it's good to see you. Good to see your smiling faces. And we're going to worship the Lord together. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the privilege of being here. We thank you that the good news is that Jesus saves and that you are coming again. We're so grateful for all these great promises of your book. And we ask these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. I'll give you a few announcements here, and we'll have another number. The lost and found, don't forget they got some items there you might want to look over, and maybe you lost something there. You could find it. The Wills family singing today, July 17th, at 6 o'clock this evening. And join us tonight to hear the Wills family singing in the evening service. Generations of their family have been ministering through gospel music since 1938. Embrace Grace, uh, Share the Love event Saturday, July the 23rd, 10 o'clock till 1 p.m. The Embrace Grace ministry will be putting together over 150 boxes that will be distributed to the crisis preg pregnancy centers in our area. All right, and then the Brace, Embrace Grace Ministry uh, Life Semester begins Wednesday, August the 3rd, 6.30 p.m. If you know of anyone facing an unplanned pregnancy or a single mom with young children in need of support, uh, please contact uh, Susan Jokel 
or the church office for more information. And then Dr. Barber will be preaching Sunday, August the 7th at 11 o'clock and 6, uh, 6 o'clock. All right, join us then. Don't let this scare you. I'm not singing. Turn in your hymn books to 220. Got them right? We haven't got to use them. We've been lazy up on the screen, but that's okay. If it's on the screen, that's great too. I thank Brother Keith Jones for encouraging me today. You know, you always need somebody to discourage you before you speak. Thank you, Brother Keith. I have to tease him. Hymn 220, give you time to get there. Great story behind this hymn I studied a little bit about. If you look down under the wording, you'll see a name by the word text. The name is William W. Walford. William Walford was a black preacher, and he was blind. He had a little shop. I don't know how he did it, but he carved a lot of different things. But he loved the Lord. He memorized a lot of scripture. One day, one of his friends, preacher friends came in, and he said to him, he said, I'm not able to write, but he said, I, I want to quote you some words that the Lord's giving me. And another preacher got his pen out and copied down the words of this song. That preacher went about three years later, I think he was in the great city of Chicago, salute back there, and he gave it to a publisher and he published this song we're about to sing, about 170 years old, amen? I like the old songs. Come on, brother, lead us. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that call me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne may call my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul Engage the 
song, isn't it? How about a birthday? Anyone have a birthday this past week or this week coming? Where? Oh, Ruby? All right. Anyone else? Happy birthday, Ruby. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, anniversaries. Any anniversaries? All right, I don't see any. Let's look at our prayer list here. Uh, Dr. Weaver sent in a special request this morning. Uh, uh, Jim Bailey, he had requesting prayer for Jim. It, he has very serious health issues. And uh, of course, you want to remember our own folks. Now, there may be still some uh, prayer journals in the lobby. Uh, this, this is published about every three months. It keeps up with all the missionaries and the ministries of the Worth Baptist Church. You might want to get one of those. And also, the weekly prayer list published on Wednesday. And also, many of those are needing uh, requests. We had uh, many COVID cases that, arise, uh, that did arise in the past couple of weeks. So we want to prepare for those people also. How about our unspoken? We don't have, usually have quite a few of those. And the Lord knows each and every one. All right, just before our Sunday school lesson, we'll have a word of prayer. Father, now as we turn to your precious book, we do thank you for the instruction we receive from your great book. And Father, we just ask that our hearts would be open and our minds would be open to your precious word. Now we ask prayer for these dear folks who are, uh, uh, have had COVID and for those who are in uh, other health care issues and for those who have recently suffered loss in the family. And Father, we thank you so much once, once again for the privilege of being here to open your precious book and learn of thee. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Rick. Thank you, Brother Tim. If you witness a miracle, he and I shook hands this morning. He's from Michigan, and I'm from Ohio. The, Lord, the Lord's grace is good. Amen. Good morning. Can you hear me? My wife says I mumble. After 57 years of marriage, I mumble. Amen. But if you can hear me, we are off and running. I'm going to be all over the place, so stay with me. Okay, what else is new? I know. Uh, our message today is on prayer. I'll get in more than that in just a moment. But uh, we'll give you another prayer list. An auditorium class, this is no offense to you, but Liberty class. If you remember Liberty class, stand up. I want to see you, you're here. All right, a few of you. You're still with me. Thank you. I'm just trying to take a deal with it. And now, we hope by the 31st of August, I think that's on a Sunday, that we'll be back in our class. Do I have an amen to that? And that's no offense to you auditorium class, but we're going to be back. We'll re reintroduce ourselves. And with that, 29ers, those of you who are part of that, we hope by our next meeting, which is a few days before that, the 26th, that we'll be able to meet in our room. Now, the carpet may not be totally clean. The fans may not be in, but we'll have the air on and we'll be ready to go. Okay. So we'll be letting you know a little more about that in just a little bit. So keep that in mind. I have a question. How many of you, when you got saved, hopefully you can remember that. How many of you, when you got saved, were discipled by someone? I want you to stand up if that's the case. You were, you were taken under wing and you were taught importance of baptism, giving. Peggy, you're standing up. I must have missed that. But anyhow, uh, 
Did, did I see anybody other than my spiritual wife? Say, oh, way back there. Yes, Miss, okay, Miss Dreamer. You're not dreaming it. That really happened, right? Okay, all right. Did you notice something very interesting? Most of us, by your not standing, tells me, like myself, was not taken under wing by anyone and taught the things that were important after salvation. For example, baptism. It took me nine months to finally get brave enough. I think I told you last time, I'm not Aquaman, I, I don't like water. Nine months with a dear lady named Ruby Lewis knocking at my door every Thursday night to get baptized. You with me? Took me a while. This thing of giving, oh my, that really got me. Somebody said, you know, you need to start giving to the Lord. How's that? Then I argued with the Lord several years on that one. Tithe? You mean you want 10% of what I earn? And the Lord reminded me, I had to learn this later on my own. I earn, but God enables. Did you get that class? Took me a long time, and I'm still working on it. Especially with our topic today coming up in just a moment on prayer. I, I was saved during the early, well, 1965, February, I believe. That was the era of Wenham, Wedham, and Workham. Wenham, get them saved, amen. Wedham. Get them baptized, amen. But then that third one <clears throat> was a problem, work them. I'm an example of that. I was a school teacher at the time I got saved. Well, just being a school teacher doesn't make you an authority on the Bible, especially if you just got saved. And I was literally thrown into a junior high class of boys. Now, there was a regular teacher there. Matter of fact, by the way, if you know the Lord, you can do anything with the Lord's help. That teacher that I learned a little bit under was in a wheelchair. Ben. I remember Ben. I have yet to figure out how he got up those three flights of stairs to the third floor of the Dayton Baptist Temple. But he was there. But pretty soon, I was teaching junior high kids. I didn't know Genesis from Revolutions. But somehow, I survived it. But what am I getting at? You know, folks, there's a real need to be discipling people that we win to the Lord and to teach them. I am, used to be in education, there's a group of people, I'm there, called slow learners. And I'm, well, well, Brother Rizmi, how did you learn anything then? Because I wasn't reading my Bible right away. I didn't know anything about devotions. The one thing I did do, I was faithful to God's house. And I learned, by the way, a good teacher is a good preacher, and a good preacher is a good teacher. Give me an example. Dr. Barber, Dr. Weaver, Pastor Gillett. Amen? But I sat under good preaching, and I finally learned some things, but it took me a while. Are you with me, guys? Anybody at home there, down there, the same situation that you learned? Maybe your mom and dad were saved. Maybe you were saved early. And hopefully they taught you. But I, I'm, I'm chasing a rabbit here. But I'm just trying to get to our point today. Because one of the most important things we can do. And I say one of the things we talk about most and do less. Is the subject of prayer. And our lessons have been actually lessons that we should have learned. When we first got saved. But it took us a while. Amen. And one of the great lessons is about prayer. I don't stand in front of you as a great prayer warrior. God's still working on me. How about you? We sing that wonderful song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. I'll be honest with you. Be hard pressed to say I spend an hour a day in prayer. Not saying I shouldn't. And if you were honest and I put a lie detector on you, you'd probably say the same thing. So think about that, if you would, please. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Familiar passage. And we'll look at verse 9, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. 
what this is, and if you've been in church long enough, you'll know that this is called the Lord's Prayer. But it's more better called or a model prayer. And we'll see why a model prayer in just a moment as we see the contents of it give us an idea about praying. Verse 9, we'll begin there. The Lord says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, I don't know if you listened to Brother Temp's prayer this morning. He addressed our Lord and Savior as Father. Hang on to that thought. Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Everybody said, Amen. Turn, hold your place there, please. Turn to Luke. We have Luke's version of the uh, Lord's, of the Lord's Prayer, we call it, or uh, model prayer. Luke chapter 11. And I want you to see just a little difference in the rendering here in Luke's version of the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Luke chapter 11. Look at verse 1, please. Luke 11, verse 1. And it came to pass, the old black preacher said it come to pass, didn't come to stay. Amen. Praise the Lord. That as he was praying, uh-oh, what is Jesus doing? What? Come on, talk to me. He's praying. I'm glad he set the example. Amen. Just didn't tell us, teacher. He showed us as he was praying. Okay. In a certain place. Getting hit of myself a little bit. What, what else is new to me? This is for free. Help you out. Do you have a private place to pray? Think about it. Do you have a private place to pray? What do I mean by private? All alone. No noise, unless it's the birds outside chirping. Nobody around you. Now, if you remember when you had kids, that might be a real problem. You better get up real early. But Jesus was praying. I'm trying to help you out here. Find a private place to pray. No noise, no interruptions. Amen. And can I tell you, do it in the morning. Now, Bible says pray without ceasing. Amen. Have an attitude of prayer. But do it in the morning. <clears throat> All right. This is a Yankee talking about Texans. And we're going to get blamed for what I'm about to tell you anyhow. So it's okay. I have learned if I don't have a good prayer in the morning and I get out in this traffic. I lose my religion real quick. Anybody at home like that with me? And I know you're going to say all the bad drivers are Yankees. My daddy taught me how to drive at 19. He didn't think I was mature enough at 16. He was right. But he said one thing to me before I ever started driving. He said, drive like everybody else is crazy. How about that? Amen. Find you a place. Find you a good time. Find a place without interruption. And one other thing I'll give you, and this is, this has taken me a long time. Well, Brother Rigsby, how in the world can we spend an hour in prayer? Good night. That's one twenty-fourth of my day. Most of that, at my age, has been sleeping. Can I give you something else to do to help you fill that hour? I just pulled this out of somewhere else. It's a little five by seven. See that? Object lesson, object lesson. You know what I do? I make a list every morning. What kind of list? Duh, a prayer list. And you know, by the time I write down, and this happens to be 52 things to pray about, 
Some of you are on this list too. I'm not going to tell you. Embarrass you. I'm on this list. <laughs> it's me, oh Lord. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in what? Need a prayer. Amen. If you really stop and think while you're praying and write down who or what you're praying for. Now, this is nothing startling, but this was uh, yesterday. First thing I wrote on my prayer list it was your wife. No, she gets down there a little bit. It was rain. Do I have an amen, Texans? Rain, whatever that strange thing is. I probably told you the story, but I remember 1984 when I came to start Norse Bible Baptist at that time institute, seminary now. I remember sitting about right there where Barb is. Thought I needed to join church where Dr. Barb was a leader. Every, especially in July and August, every time he got up here, he did something strange. What was that, Brother Ray? He prayed for rain. And I'm sitting back there thinking, I never heard that. Up north in Yankee land where God lets it rain all the time. But now after 38 years, I understand why he plays for rain. And then, you know, it just hit my mind my second thing, something that rhymes with. I wrote down the word Ukraine. Ukraine. I don't know if you follow the news. I don't follow a whole lot of it, obviously. But we need to pray for the country of Ukraine and all that's going on there. So make a list, start with your family, start with your friends, start with your church, start with organizations, start with the ministries of this church. Quiet place, silent place, place you can, place you can make a prayer list. Kind of ahead of myself and just trying to help you with that. And I better put that, I save these by the way, just in case I need reminders and everything, okay? Think about it. By the way, I gave you or the guys gave you a, a little sheet today. Some quotes on prayer, great quotes. Now, don't look at them while I'm teaching. Wait till Pastor Gillett, to, and you, no, I'm just, kid, just kidding you to do it, okay? A little boy prayed one day. Now I lay me down to sleep. A bag of peanuts at my feet. If I should die before I wake, you know I died of a tummy ache. And you said, well, that's kind of funny, kind of cute. But I wonder if that is about equivalent to how we pray. I wonder how far our prayers get up to the throne of grace. That's just a challenge to give you. Now, as we get into the meat of the message, that's all introduction, by the way. Notice God is not saying pray this prayer. But he's saying in a manner of nothing wrong with quoting and, and praying the Lord's prayer or the model prayers we call it. Nothing wrong with that. But that's, uh, he calls it one time about the leaders of the church, mere repetitions. So our prayer should come what? From our heart. From our heart to pray. So he's not saying, it, it's a guide to show us how to pray, if you understand that. And let me break it down into six Ps in a pod. Barber, Brother Fleming. You remember him, don't you? <clears throat> Brother Fleming used to preach. That's who I got saved under, Dayton, Ohio. Dayton Baptist Temple. He oftentimes he'd get up and he said, I'm gonna preach to you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach five Ps in a pod. And if you know anything about preaching, which I know very little, but you have what you call alliteration where every major point starts with the same letter. So he'd have a message with five Ps in a pod. Well, I'm going to go six Ps in a pod if you'll stay with me, okay? Got you. I got Dan, it's okay to do it, so I'm going to do it, okay? All right. Real quick, about six things to look at when we look at the Lord's Prayer, as we call it, or the modern prayer. Notice the persons of the prayer. The persons of the prayer. There are two persons as such. Number one is our heavenly father. Amen. He's the recipient and the answer of our prayers. By the way, throw this in now while I'm thinking of it. God answers prayer in three ways. Oftentimes it'll be yes. 
Amen? It'll be yes. Sometimes, and we don't like it, he answers no. Watch my lips. No. But most of the time, class, he answers, wait. Wait. Why does he do that? No, we pray one time. Okay. But are you real serious about what you pray about? Let's see if you're real serious. Let's see if you'll set up and keep hitting the throne of grace for it. Think about that. Think about that. So the one person is the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Hang on to that thought. The other people are we as Christians. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Saved believers. That's the other part. That's the people of prayer. Think about it, okay? Uh, there's a word in the Bible. It's Aramaic. And it's called Abba. Abba. Abba means literally, listen to me, daddy. Well, that's kind of just, no, that's a good word. Daddy. The Lord is our dad. You remember growing up and you wanted something? And dad would be sitting there at night. You'd crawl up in his lap. And he'd say, dad, sure like to have that BB gun. Yeah, and I'm going way back. It's all right, Troy. I'm, I get when you get old, you reminisce. Should like to have that BB gun. And I didn't get it the next night. I kept <clears throat> hounding him, <laughs> asking him. Here's a lesson here. He finally relented and bought me that BB gun. Man, I th it was a Red Rider BB gun. How many of you remember Red Rider stuff? Whew, glad I'm speaking to the right group. And he was hesitant. On giving me that BB gun. Well, he was right in his hesitancy. About a week after I got it, I went outside. Never forget this, because I got reminders back here. And there was something on our, our driveway. And I went, bang. I'm left-handed, so I, I missed it, of course. And I heard a real funny sound after the BB went off the driveway. Ding. I'm like, ding. <clears throat> Day later, our neighbor across the street comes over. Brother Mrs. Love. That's a good name to have. Never had any kids. They kind of like me. And uh, they said, we need to talk to your father. Oh, that's probably not good, huh? And what happened when I hit, shot that BB, it ricocheted when across the street and hit their picture window and put a hole in it. Not good. You know, sometimes God doesn't want to answer our prayers for the obvious reason. What happened to you, Brother Rigsby? Well, I'll get to the bottom of it a, bit, a little bit later. Some of you caught that, okay? To do it, to do it. Now, here's a great thing, class. And this is uh, against a certain denomination. Aren't you glad that when we pray, we can go straight to the Father without going through anybody else? I'm not trying to be critical of another denomination or religion, but I don't need a priest. That veil was torn in half and Christ died, access straight to the Lord. I don't need, now I need other people to pray for me. Amen. But I and we as born again Christians have access to the Lord without having to go through any man. Are you happy about that? Say amen to do it. Straight to the Lord. Number two, quickly, we talk about the person, the purpose of prayer. Why do we pray? That's a good question. The purpose of prayer. It is, and we'll see it in verse 10 in Matthew there. We looked at it. It's that God's will be done. Hmm. What's it say? Your will be done. And by the way, when you pray, here's a good phrase. Lord, if it's your will. If it's your will. It's not God's will for me to drive a new Cadillac. <clears throat> I don't think. <laughs> I just need four tires and a horn. But what do we do? We're seeking God's will. Well, what is God's will? You can look it up. Well, he's not willing that what? Anyone should perish. What are we doing about God's will there? 
What is God's will? Our job is to pray that God's will be done. And somebody has said, God's will is what is not something that you have to do, but it's that you get to do. And I wrote down here, I, I can only read my writing, by the way. I wrote down the word personal. <clears throat> oh, by the way, Dr. Weaver will be back a week after next. You've got me one more week. So if you're going to miss a Sunday, I would choose next Sunday. I didn't say that. But preparing for the message at this point about God's will. I was in public school for 10 years. I was a teacher, then became a principal of the same school that I came, went through. That's kind of interesting. In fact, some of the teachers that I became boss of taught me when I was coming through school. Kind of weird, huh? But I got saved and the Lord started stirring my nest. In the meantime, I had started a Christian school down in Dayton, Ohio, Temple Christian School. And by the glory of God, it's still going after all these years. But later on, the Lord stirred my nest and, and I started praying, Lord, what, what are you trying to tell me? And I finally surrendered full time to the Lord and I went down and took over the school I started. And I was there four years and then the Lord started stirring my nest again. And then about four fellas from a town called Holland, Michigan, hi Michelle, flew down to my home to interview me about coming to Holland, Michigan and starting a Christian school. Hi Michigan. I didn't really want to do that. The Lord said, by the way, if you can get a guy from Ohio to move to Michigan, you're doing good. <laughs> Brother Tim's going to give me. But I wrestled with it. And I finally came to the point of <clears throat> surrender and the Lord's will. And then six years later, through some relatives who were members of worth, they started telling me about Dr. Barber wanting to start a Bible college. I always wanted to go to Bible college. You can tell, great Bible scholar I am, I never went. <laughs> but God said, I want you to go to Texas and start a Bible college. Not my will, Lord, the time be done. And 38 years later, it's still going. I'm still going and praise the Lord. Number three, quickly, the provision of prayer. The provision of prayer. Matthew 6, 11 says, give us this day our daily bread. I wonder, in our prayers, do we really pray for a provision every day? You know, God's been so good to us in America. God has always supplied. What's Philippians 4, 19 say? My God so supply all your need. Listen, according to his riches. It's not according to Chase Bank or Wells Fargo. God's got a whole lot more riches than that. Amen. And God supplies every day. Every day. He provides for us. And I'm just going to encourage you when you pray, pray specifically about your needs, about your kids, about your family. The Bible says in James 4, 2, you have not because you ask not. Don't be afraid. Our Heavenly Father is there to help us. Quickly, next, number four, the pardon. Oh, I like this one. Next P, a pardon of prayer. Watch Matthew 6, 12. Look at it if you've got your Bible. Forgive us our debts as we forgive others. By the way, just a little pause. Why doesn't God answer our prayer? Number one, we've never been saved. I'll let you decide that about yourself. Number two, we're not praying in God's will. We need to pray, God, if it's your will, okay? Number three, we simply don't ask. Duh. Number four, unconfessed sin. Unrepented sin in our lives. And so we ask for forgiveness. Have you asked for forgiveness in your prayer? Did you offend someone? Did you say something to somebody? 
How about husband-wife relationships? I'll get off that real quick. Think about it. Think about it. Two prayer promises. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Did you get that? If your prayers aren't getting answered, you need to check yourself out in your life, iniquity in your heart and what you're doing, okay? Think about it. 1 John 1, 9, we know it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to clear, clean, whew, clean us from all unrighteousness. Grab a hold of that. When you sin, you can get back in right relationship with the Lord. Think about it. Next, quickly, time is fleeting. The protection of prayer. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you this, but I will anyhow. The devil is real. Did you get that? He messes with me every morning. Every time of the day. The devil hates us. All scripture, you know that. And he's asking us to deliver us from that sin, from that evil one. Satan, get behind me. You ever had to say that? Do it. Think about it. There. We, that's why we get to pray in the morning. I've kind of done that to it. Uh, and talked about the traffic. Here's one of my favorite prayers. Are you ready? Donna's getting ready to write this down. Or her store order. Give me patience, Lord, but hurry. Some of you get that. Give me patience, Lord, but hurry. Didn't give me much patience. Next, quickly, the praise. Another P, the praise of prayer. You notice at the beginning and the end of the model prayer, he is praying, praising the Lord to do that. And uh, notice he calls him hallowed, be thy name. That means reverential. That means holy. And then look at the end of it. Thine be the glory, the honor, and all that. Praise the Lord for the prayer. By the way, did you ever praise the Lord we praise Him for a lot of good things, amen? Better do that. But did you ever praise the Lord for what didn't happen? How about that close call with another car? Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. How about a doctor's diagnosis didn't come true? Did you ever thank the Lord for that? Did you ever praise the Lord for that? Be a good habit you need to get into. Praise the Lord for what didn't happen. Lastly, don't you love it when a preacher and a teacher says lastly, but we're not quite done. Stay with me. We have the praise of prayer. I'll give you that to do it. In conclusion, <clears throat> we won't turn there, but there's a great song. I don't know that we've ever sung it here and again I'm not going to sing it to you but sometime look in your song book at number 218 it's called teach me to pray teach me to pray it's a great song I hope you'll look at it to do it then I'm going to give you one last prayer now I know we ought not just pray what everybody prayers but there's another prayer and I'll be done Lord or Father, let me be a nobody. Let me be a nobody telling anybody about somebody who loves everybody. Let me say it again. Lord, let me be a nobody telling anybody about somebody who loves everybody. Amen? Well, you like them two skunks kissing. You can get all you wanted, but you got all you could stand. We'll see you in church. Have a good day.